Hi everybody. In my uh, last video I talked about the basics of Krita. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about animation in Krita. And I believe animation was introduced in Krita 3.0. This is 3.0.1. So if you don't know the basics of drawing in uh, Krita, I would suggest that you check out my other tutorial on that. Um, but now we want to kind of focus on animation. Um, you can go underneath settings dockers and notice that there's the animation and there's the timeline and onion skins so you can just click on those if you want but an easy thing to do is to go to the um, workspace area here and click on animation um, I'm going to interrupt to talk a little bit about export of the animation this is something I found out after uh, I was working on this tutorial which is specifically export animation only exports to an image sequence. Now that may be fine if you're used to that, if you're used to um, uh, simpler programs that just create uh, the animation movie like an AVI or, or an MP4. Uh, that will not happen at this point in time in Krita. You can only export the sequence. Um, and you can select whatever images that you want, uh, uh, the output format, um, JPEG is really not typically used for animation, but that's a good choice for the basics. Um, or if you're going to import as a rough sketch into another program. TGA is a popular format, but it is very large. So you'll have to look at the image sequences. The other thing that I noticed is that for PNG, um, it was not able to export there. I'm not sure why that is. Um, and so I'm not sure how many of the different formats are actually supported. JPEG definitely does work. TGA definitely does work. Um, by default, I think it uh, does open EXR. Now, of course, in order to export, you want to make sure whichever layers are of interest are visible before you export. You um, may or may not want the background to, to be visible, uh, but again, it depends upon the output format, uh, whether transparency is supported. The other thing that you need to understand is that the output requires 16-bit um, float. Um, by default, um, when you create a new image, notice that by default it will say 8-bit. Um, the depth is 8-bit. And so you may get an error message going, you can't export. And you go, oh no, I spent all this time creating an animation. Now to fix that, you can go to Image, Convert Image Color Space, and then you would select, instead of 8-bit, you would select 16 bits float and say OK and it will convert the color space and now you can export. So I wanted to make sure that people understood that before they got into the work of actually creating an animation. Um, so that may be a, will affect you. So that's another point uh, to be aware of with respect to Krita. Krita is an open source project and so that means that it is free for you and it has very powerful features and it also means that they may release features uh, that are not uh, quite as well developed as a more professional package that costs a lot more. The advantage is you're able to give feedback and actually contribute to the project and you're able to get features uh, sooner than you might otherwise get. And animation is a new feature that has been added to Krita so I just wanted you to be aware of that. Now if you haven't done animation within a uh, drawing program, it's just an elaboration of that drawing. So you've got the layers like you would expect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this vector layer here. And so now we're just starting with a first um, layer. Now notice that there, this layer is transparent. You can see because of the dotted or the square checkerboard if I um, turn off the visibility of layer one which is a background paper if you will. Um, this um, layer two is a transparent layer and that's important to know when we do animation because in order for it to do onion skins we want um, the transparency to show through and if the layer is not completely transparent you may not see what's underneath it in the onion skin. But I can keep uh, layer one as white if I want to do that. So in this particular case, I have my brush presets showing up 
and my favorite presets selected underneath here and just selected one of the drawing tools and set the brush size to what I want. So I'm ready to draw. Now let's look at what we have in the animation. We've got a, a timeline docker down here and we see that by default we're setting on frame zero. Layer two is what is selected. Notice as I select the layer in the layers docker, it also changes the layer that shows up in the timeline docker. So now we can look at the onion skins. We'll get to that in a second. But let me look at the animation tab and notice as I select different frames, the frame that I have selected shows up in this animation window here. I can also change the frame I'm looking at just by clicking on the arrows. Um, the start and end of the animation, we can set and change those. Our typical playheads are there so that we can move through that. Um, and you can see the onion skins and some other things here. We're not going to talk about those right now. So let's start off by creating an animation. So in frame zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that frame and select new frame. And that will notice a light bulb comes up and that will deal with onion skins, which we'll show in just a second. But let me now just draw something. I'm just going to draw the classic circle for animation. Now for the next frame, I'm just going to go to uh, frame three and select new frame. And we're ready to draw. You can easily see that it's a new frame because uh, the first frame went away. But of course, we want to have the onion skin. So we can turn on the onion skins to the left by clicking on that light bulb. Now, if you're, um, we can see here the previous cell or the previous frame. And if that's not showing up on yours, it could be a couple of things going on. Let's click on onion skins and let's talk about what this thing means. The first thing that you want to notice is that there's kind of a curve of graphs and uh, there's a 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, a minus 1 and a minus 2 and a positive 1 and a positive 2. And what this means is 0 is kind of everything. So if I pull this um, bar down. I can drag it up and down and it changes the opacity of everything and we'll show that a little bit more later. But um, here if I click on the zero all of the onion skins are turned off. And if I click on zero again and show it now all the onion skins show up. Negative one means one frame behind. Actually not one frame but one cell or drawing behind. So it's not just the immediate frame if I'm since I'm on uh, frame three it's not frame two it's the actually the cell in uh, frame zero. And again I can change its opacity by dragging it up and down. And that's why you can see this curve what we have is we have the opacity changing and getting less the further away that you get from your current frame. Notice also you can change the colors of the previous and next frame and the amount of tint that is there by dragging. Now if the tint is down low, it looks kind of gray, so you can change that how you want. Okay, so now I'm just going to draw another circle, go to frame six, and I've created another frame, draw a circle, Go to frame 9, new frame, circle, and continue that. And notice as I drag and scrub, now we can see these frames uh, and the onion skins. So let me draw one more on 12. Right click, new frame, and have a circle there. So now notice I see only two frames before and that's because we've got the negative one and negative two. I can click on the negative three and that will show up uh, negative four. That will show up we don't have a fifth frame. And again, as I said, we can change the opacity of those so that frame four actually shows up the most. Perhaps there's a key frame there that I want to see. And so I can control that. Same thing is true for the ones in front. 
So as I drag, I can see one, two frames, but that's all, only two frames ahead because only those are selected. And if I want the frame immediately ahead to be turned off, I can just click on the number above there. So again, if you don't see your onion skins, part of the reasons may be this light bulb may be turned off. If that light bulb is turned on, then perhaps the overall uh, op opacity is turned off. If that is turned on and the light bulb is on, then more than likely you've been drawing on a, an opaque layer, like layer number one, and not on a transparent layer. So those are the things to check there. Okay, so when you're ready to test out your animation, just go to the Animation tab and make sure the start and end frames are the ones that you're interested in. This one by default is going all the way to 100, but I'm only, you know, created an animation up to 12, so I'm going to set it to 20 so that there's a little space after that. And now I just collect, uh, select Play, and we can see the animation happening. Notice that the uh, onion skins are there, so I can turn off those onion skins and I see the animation playing. Now, of course, if I want to change uh, the timing of the images, I can just click and drag uh, the cell where I want it to be. So if I want ease in or ease out, I can have those kinds of things happening just by dragging the cells. Let's turn on the animation again. So that is controlled that way. And as you might expect, I can drag past another frame. That doesn't make sense here, but in general, you know, what this is saying is I can move any image to any location that I want. So as we're coming down, the ball is coming down, then in this case it happens to pop back up because I moved it in front of that last frame. Now let me turn my onion skins back on, and of course to do in-betweening, I just go to the frame of interest, right-click to create a new frame, and now I can uh, create whatever shape I want, and that frame will uh, have an in-between. Now remember, it's just a layer that I'm drawing on, so if I want to now delete that, I can delete the uh, drawing off of it. Notice the frame is still there, uh, but the the uh, pixels that I've drawn, I can delete those and I can do anything that I want on that layer. If I want to remove the drawing itself, I just right click and remove frame, and that really is removing a drawing. Now as I mentioned, this is just a drawing program, and so I can go in and I can add a new layer just by clicking on the plus and it creates a new layer. Now the number five, I've just been creating some and so that's why the order is there. You can name it what you want or I can create a new layer um, by clicking on the plus in the timeline and notice it keeps them in sync. So whichever layer I select um, is the one that will show up and of course that allows me to do different animations on different layers so I can have different things happening in the background or different characters. Okay, a, a last few things to show with respect to the basics of animation. I'm going to go back to frame 6 on layer 2 and I'm going to right click new frame. So we've got a new frame and in this particular case I'm going to draw a triangle in particular so that you know uh, what I've drawn. And let's go to a different frame, let's say frame 9. I'm going to right click and select copy frame. And what copy frame is going to do is it's going to make a copy of the previous frame. Now it doesn't seem to be doing anything right now. Um, that's because they're the same. Now I'm going to drag this out to the end so that you can see it more easily. Notice, and in fact I'll turn off the onion skins, we've got the triangle shape and then we hit 12, frame 12, it becomes a circle, and in frame uh, 14, it's a circle. And then when we finally get to 20, there we go, we've got the triangle again, the copy of what was on frame 6. If I go now here to um, frame 24, I can't copy any particular frame, it's going to copy the one uh, just before it. So if I 
want to put a circle that's a copy of this frame 16. I don't want to right click on that because it'll remove the frame um, and I can't go out here where I want it to be. Instead I'm just going to select a frame immediately after the existing frame, right click, copy the frame, and then drag it out to wherever I want it to be. So now we've just shown we can copy a frame and now here it comes back to circle and then I can add to it of course and do whatever modifications I would like. Okay, so that was the basics of animation in Krita and I hope it was helpful.